Can everyone hear me? How's the audio? Hello, hello. Thank you, Dinesh. Dinesh Kumar. Sounds good. Everyone can hear me. All right. Uh, hey, coach, coach, coach. Uh, hello everyone. So we're doing today our second interview. Uh, today will be uh, interviewing or talking, doing a conversation with Mason Philip. Uh, he is uh, one of the six drivers from Brian, Brian Hurt of Autosports. Uh, last time, last Wednesday, we talked with Mark Wilkins. So this time we have going to have a chance to talk with Mason. Um, the, the conversation is going to start at six, so I have two more minutes. That way I can test the audio and, and everything that is happening. Uh, hopefully everything is going to work uh, normal. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now we're we're expecting to do this, like I mentioned before, it's not going to be like a podcast, uh, as far as like in the blog, we're trying to do these videos every now and then to talk about the news that we find, any leaks that we find, uh, that it's 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 not happening as, as it used to be before, obviously because of the whole coronavirus and, and that, but um, we're still getting news, we're still getting pictures, so we're going to um, see how everything progresses, hopefully um we recently got some um news for the hyundai 45 ev and uh also we recently got pictures about the stinger kia stinger so we're getting some information um dinesh where are you guys based from well i'm in dallas texas united states i have a, uh the other co-founder mark uh jose he is in spain and we have two, three other editors, Henry in Washington State, Eli in Oregon, and um, Kevin in California. So let's see. Seems like Mason is already here. So I'll go ahead and type him into his camera. Go live. Let's see if that works. My clock is telling me it's six. Hey, hey, Mason, how's it how going? Doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How's the weather over there in California? It's it's actually really nice today. It's like about ninety degrees at my house. Oh and, wow, uh, that's yeah, good. It's, it's hot. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Here, at least here in Dallas, it's kind of well. We got a thunderstorm last night, so the the temperature dropped a little bit, and but we still have the sun, so it's. Still good, still good. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's see. We have Mark Wilkins is joining us today as well in the comments. Hey, all hey, right. <laughs> all right, so I think we can probably get this started. Um, well, first of all, thank you for for uh, joining us today. Um, I haven't got the time. I have, met you personally you actually met my other editor Eli uh, back in when you were racing in uh, uh, is it in Oregon no yeah, yeah I think it was in Oregon, Oregon right yeah uh, but yeah nice to eat meet you electronically meet you but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll probably get a get the chance to, to talk in one of your races that hopefully um, you know we'll be able to see it during this this season That'd be awesome. um, uh, but, so let's start with the basics uh, Tell us your name and what do you do for a living? So I'm Mason Filippi and uh, I race cars for Brian Hurt Autosport in Hyundai. And uh, I raced the, this year the number 98 Hyundai Velocity and TCR car in IMSA, Michelin Pilot Challenge. It's, All uh, right. It's, it's been amazing. <laughs> well, we only had so far one race, but yeah. still, you had you had the spirit with the Veloster and last year as well. But we'll get to know into that. Um, so... Also, let let us uh, tell us how you, how you've been during this uh, you know this whole COVID nineteen situation uh, health wise. How, how are you guys doing? 
Uh, you know, thank you so much for asking. I'm, I'm doing well health wise, same with my family. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely hard on, you know, mentally just trying, you know, being at home so much and kind of, you know, I want to be out there driving. I want to be driving everything, you know, and uh, racing and flying and traveling. And, you know, I love all the aspect. I miss the team, miss my teammates and everything like that, but it's been good mm-hmm. so far. And I'm glad uh, my, my family's healthy and everything like that. And uh, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Uh, the same here, working from home. Uh, the have all my family here, my wife and my, my daughters. Um, we're still here. Try to get out every now and then so we can at least get some air, fresh air, because it's all the time in the house is, is getting uh, crazy, crazy, especially with my, well, I have a young daughter, which is five, and then the other one, which is only two weeks old. So <laughs> it's going to be it's chaos. <laughs> that is chaos, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. We're doing good so far. Thankfully, all of this is going to pass slowly, uh, but um, we have we have to do our part, you know, to to try to ease all this uh, spreading uh, of the virus. Coffee or espresso? <laughs> Mark coffee. is asking. <laughs> coffee, yeah. All right. So um, last time. Uh, hopefully, I think I sent you this this before. Uh, the Mark was telling us before he got cut off. Um, there was a he he wanted to mention something which is about the Hyundai pole position episodes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, Hyundai pole position is is back this year and uh, on Motor Trend, and they do an amazing job with and they really capture the emotion and kind of how hard the team works to put together every single one of our events and. Uh, They'll follow us at Pit Fit. They also kind of came to our home, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about us, you know, where uh, Harry lives, Michael, Mark, and kind of about what we do when we're not racing. And uh, we, the first episode was released from Daytona, so you can really kind of get a background of, you know, how that season was starting and our expectations coming into the season. And uh, it's uh, it's been great. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season and the rest of the pole positions. So is this going, is it a video on YouTube or where can we watch this? Yeah, so you can watch it on either Motor Trend On Demand or YouTube on uh, Motor Trend's uh, YouTube channel. And mm-hmm. uh, you can find the different seasons. So this is the third season and you can kind of see the uh, the seasons from before and kind of see what was going on and learn more kind of the background story on each each uh, video. Okay, all right. And one another thing that uh, Mark was going to mention is uh, Brian Brian heard of more sport out of sports. It's uh, he was mentioning you guys were making some uh, face shields to donate. Yeah, so uh, Brian heard Auto Sport. They reached out to Indiana and they said, "What do you guys need for help?" Because you know, motorsport, we, there's so many resources and uh, the teams are so fortunate. And you know, right now that they're not racing, you know, we still want to do things with our hands. And so. Brian at Autosport is such an amazing team, and they started off making face shields for workers in need, and nice. they started off making 450 a week, and then they got all the way up to 3,000 wow. a week, and uh, wow. yeah, 3,000 a week, and so they have a goal to go even higher, and so it's incredible to see what they're doing, and such a cool amazing. opportunity to race for such an amazing team like that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's always good to you know bring back to the community. Um, it, it's always healthy as well because you know you, you sharing the love. To, for your community, it's always it's always good, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are appreci- can appreciate that as well. Are those masks being uh, sent to the hospitals? I believe. I'm not exactly sure where they're going, but I believe they're going to the hospitals and also uh, workers mm-hmm. in need of uh, face shields. That's good. Thank you, thank you to Brian Herda for for that uh, very um, good the uh, love to for the community and and of course the, the nurses and, and doctors. Um, all right, so let's let's get back to your questions. So, can you tell us? Well, right now, obviously, with this so many hours that we have in home, um, probably you might be able to get some new skills or learn some new skills or maybe relearn them. Can you tell us what what you have been uh, maybe learned during this time? It's uh, one thing that I learned during this time was how to roast coffee beans with my family. <laughs> So we drink ah, a lot nice. of coffee in our family, and so we've been able to roast our own coffee beans, even though I have some of my favorite roasters out there. But it's been really interesting to try. <laughs> like, you know, you roast it a little bit more, it tastes a little bit different. You roast a little bit less, it tastes a little definitely. bit different. And so uh, it's definitely been really interesting on that. And uh, also working on uh, the simulator. I mean, before, I mm-hmm. didn't really drive the sim too much. I would use it to maybe learn the track, like, per se. 
you know, I, I last year was the first time I went to Road Atlanta. I was like, okay, I can learn on iRacing. I can learn how where the turns are and different things like that. But there's so much more you can do on the simulator, and you really dial in your technique. And so I've been doing that a lot over this time, and uh, definitely get to spend a lot of time with my family as well, which is really really nice. That's good. Yeah, it seems like the the simulator, for the most part, obviously, it's not the real. Fi- I mean, it's not similar to what you're driving the car, but at the same time, it gives you some points as to uh, how to get a feel of the track as far as like also you're not feeling it with the steering wheel, but um, how you come coming into the, to the different turns and all that. But uh, even when I talked to Mark, he was telling me that he's not he wasn't good at, with the simulator, and even with his computer. I think he needed to do some upgrades as well as yours, right? You yes. guys kind of do it together. We kind of did it together, <laughs> yeah. So we were sitting there. We did the first race and. You know, we were, I was driving. I was like, Mark. I was like, we're struggling a lot right now. And so we kind of went, <laughs> we went and we went online. I talked to one of my buddies, and, and we we're like, oh, what do we need to do to change it to make our computers better? And so we did screens. I mean, I I ended up rebuilding the whole system from like a like a little Logitech wheel. And I did some Fanatec stuff, and uh, he he ended up changing his screens and and his computer. <laughs> and we're on Facetime together, like, oh, because we, you know we haven't really built computers ourselves together, and so. I'm like, right. he's there and putting his uh, graphics card in, and I'm like there for moral support, basically. Like, oh, I'd like try restarting it a couple times. Like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So, <laughs> but it worked. Fun. It worked. You guys are now, uh, you were able to, well, we'll talk about a little bit more, but you, you guys raced last uh, last night, right? With the yeah. With Forza 7? Yeah, so we, we raced on Forza 7 last night, and uh, we, we got to race with the fans, and it was it was a great time, and we have a lot of fun and you know it's really funny because we did it we did some testing beforehand and michael mark and i and we tried to put together the best setup and uh the host oh. actually switched it all to stock and we're like no so we lost oh. our we lost our perfect <laughs> setup that we had on, on forza 7 and uh it, it, you know those guys are so good and you know it's definitely a whole it's a whole new world and uh mm-hmm. that can't wait can't wait for some more forza 7 and some more i racing <laughs> all right so Let's see now. Um, you know, like I was mentioned before, twenty-four hours. It's a lot of hours. Can you tell us what is your um, your what do you do throughout the whole day? So throughout the whole day, I mean, it's I actually gotten a pretty good routine after about you know two weeks or so, and uh, so I would wake up, you know, probably around seven in the morning and uh, drink a cup of coffee. You know, you have to start with a cup of coffee and uh, then <laughs> exercise. Always, yeah. <laughs> yeah, check my Pit Fit Team Builder app and I would, I would exercise and after doing that I'd come back inside make some breakfast you know talk to my family maybe jump on the sim with uh, mark or michael or harry or something like that and then after that or you know fill that time during the middle of the day with either school work um uh you know roasting coffee beans taking photos you know doing kind of fun different activities like that you know maybe washing or waxing the veloster um just kind of try to keep myself busy throughout the middle of the day and you know work on merch you know with michael and and so team avocado and so I had a, had a great time and it's it's been cool because with you know facetime and different you know being able to message and everything like that i can get close to you know, all my teammates and everything so make sure to stay in touch throughout the day and uh after that i would you know maybe go for a run or a second exercise or you know maybe run bike or different things like that and then come back you know take a shower again simulate Right, you know, I got to jump back on the simulator, cook dinner with my family. After that, after cooking dinner, clean it up, simulate again, and uh, after that, maybe FaceTime my girlfriend or friends or different things like that before I go to bed. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, it's always. I mean, um, I guess now since we have a lot of time, uh, we have to have to be pretty good in, in our schedule uh, because uh, I mean, if you don't do it, then nobody's just going to do it. So you have to, you have to keep up with it. <laughs> All right. So now that we have some time left, I mean, we, I mean, we have a lot of hours in our hands. Uh, probably you have some um, some new things that you can explore. Let's talk a little bit, little bit about movies. Um, have you watched any new movies or any TV series that you can uh, can recommend us to watch? Um, so actually, a series I just started a couple of days ago is Money Heist on Netflix. It's kind of recommended to me, and so. I just watched right. the first few episodes, and I'm actually getting into it, and uh, it's been awesome, and uh, definitely enjoy that. And uh, let's see, movies, Fast and Furious series is always great. You know, you watch them when you're growing up, and then you go and uh, rewatch it again, and you know, it's definitely a good time. 
And uh, Ford vs. Ferrari is also one of my other favorite movies right now, and that came out, and I had a great time with that. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so how about um, – all right, so let's get, my, let's get into – getting to know you more. How can you tell us how your uh, professional driving career started? Um, so it started off, uh, I started karting when I was younger and then I actually wasn't too young when I started karting, I was probably 11 or 12. And then um, after that, I moved to Spec Miatas and also MX-5 Cups. And then I raced in World Challenge at the end of my season of MX-5 Cup. And you know, mm -hmm. it was a great series. And so I decided I want to kind of move into that and then after that I went to um, TCR no sorry I went to touring car and I raced in touring car and had a great season there they went to TCR and actually that year is where I first got to drive with the uh, Brian Autosport the California eight hours at the end of the year that year I was able to drive the GTI TCR the type R TCR and then the i30 N TCR and so it was a good time and I actually raced against Mark and Michael during that season and <laughs> It was, it was awesome. They're, they've been great <laughs> to race against, race with, and everything. And Brian Hurt Autosport was amazing. And uh, that first California 8 Hours event, I was I remember being so nervous coming to the event. And it was at uh, Laguna Seca, which is one of my home tracks. And so I showed up there, and uh, they the whole team was just welcoming me with open arms. And everyone there, is, it's, like, it's like being with a family. So I remember that, and I just kind of fell in love with the team right away. That's good. That's good. Now you mentioned about when you raced with Mark, uh, you made a, uh, a question last time about uh, a Glenn when you guys were racing at Glenn. Can you tell us a little bit in your side of the story? Oh, so we're, we're <laughs> racing at Glenn. And so I was racing against Mark and I think I, I don't quite remember what happened, but I think I made a pass on him and I got a little squirrely going into the bus stop. and I, I think I bumped the blinker button and I had <laughs> no idea that the blinker button was on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, and I, it was only my second race in the car, second week in the car. So I didn't really have, I, I had all the lights and everything memorized, but for some reason, the the blinker button it just didn't register with me or something like that. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go with that story, or I was just trying to distract. Him. Who knows? And so basically, I drove the entire race, Mark right on my tail. It was a great battle, uh, and with him following me with the blinker. So after after that race happened. I remember coming to the, the, the California 8 Hours, which was afterwards, and he was like, what about the blinker? Like, I, John, our engineer, was like, do you remember the blinker? And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, the blinker at Watkins Glen, because Mark had to sit there and follow me with the blinker the whole time. And so it kind of became this, you know, joke and meme. And so whenever Mark and I are on track together, uh, the, the Veloster and TCR, the, button, the blinker will go off. It, it goes off automatically, but we'll click it. Just And we both know, and everyone on the team kind of knows what, <laughs> what is going on. And so it's definitely it's definitely a good time. Did you knew that the blinker was on? Or did was as soon as you got it, uh, you, you parked, did you notice the blinker was on? Or how did you come to know that it was on? I don't think I actually knew the blinker was on until after the race and someone told me, hey, Mason, you left your blinker on the whole time. <laughs> and so then they became a joke like, oh, it's kind of a kind of a distraction technique or something like that. And, uh, yeah, That's good. Funny. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, whenever he, you put the question and Mark was just laughing, it's like he, he knew what, <laughs> what he was. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, all right, so last season uh, you participated with the Veloster and with uh, Harry Gottsacker. And by the way, congratulations, you guys placed second second position, uh, second place uh, in the, uh, here it goes, 2019 I'm, IMSA Michelin Pilot TCR class. There you go. Uh, can you tell us how, how that, uh, the feeling that you got whenever you guys, you know, finally get to the uh, finish of the race? and then you'll be able to hold a trophy. Yeah, so, you know, working with Harry, Harry's an awesome dude, an awesome teammate, and, you know, he's one of my friends, and, you know, we, we didn't even know each other at the beginning of the season, so we came in Daytona fresh. We didn't really know the car. We didn't know the, you know, the series. We didn't, you know, we're pretty, we're fairly young, and so it was definitely, like, all this new stuff, and so definitely got to grow with each other in, in, the, in the race car and had a great time with him throughout the entire season. And, you know, we had some amazing races, like, I wrote America where he brought home the win or VIR where we had yes. a good a good podium and Lime Rock where we also had a, two Hyundais on the podium. Both of the our Hyundai TCR cars on the podium during that race. And so um, it was a great season. And I remember coming into 
you know, the end of the season where we, you know, it, it was a chance that we'd get one, two in the championship. And, you know, you go and, and you're looking at all the points and you're calculating the points. And you're like, okay, what do I have to do to execute this? And so you're going to that last race and, and you're just thinking in your head, like all the different scenarios that could go on during the race, right? I and mean, we do this every single race. You know, you open your notes, you open, I didn't know the track. So I saw like the simulator. I was asking Harry, how did, how is this track? Because it's one of his favorite tracks. And so we go in that race and it's just like a whole lot of buildup and, when everything's finished and you go to the awards ceremony and you hold that second place, uh, even though it's second place, you know, and your teammates are holding the first place ones, you kind of look over and, and it's, it's kind of surreal. And, you know, you're just so grateful to be there and so thankful for such an awesome team because without Brian Hurd Autosport and Hyundai's support, I mean, we drive the cars, but there's so much more that goes on. And I mean, the team is amazing and incredible. And that race and the, almost, the entire season, they didn't make mistakes and they were so good and so on top of it the entire time. And, Definitely thankful to be such a part of an amazing team. Good. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit, because I know that you guys took the, the first place on the uh, uh, Road of America. Can you, can you tell us a little bit how, how that race went? That, that was a wild race. And uh, so I remember at the beginning, all of a sudden, it was sunny on the pit lane. And then all of a sudden, all these clouds just came in. And and uh, the, the clouds came in, and it was like, we're like, is it going to hail? What's going to happen? You know? And so this massive storm came. And uh, Kyle, our engineer last year, he was like, he's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to gamble on slicks or do you want to go on reins? And th oh, wow. there's been a joke between the uh, the whole team. It's like every single time Kyle and I have to make the choice of whether it's going to be slicks in the rain. <laughs> For some reason, I always get stuck with slick tires in the rain. And so there's actually a great <laughs> picture from last year that uh, I can't remember who captured it. But it's like you can see the tire on top of the rainwater because I'm on slick tires. It, it was so funny and, and oh, hard wow. to drive. But <laughs> basically, we we had this we had a crazy start to the race, and I dropped so far back, and I was like, "How like how far back am I on the radio? You know, how far back am I? Because I can't go any faster. I mean, it's so so slick out there. It's cold. It's wet. And uh, wait for the track to dry. Then all of a sudden, the track dries. I remember calling on the radio like, "Kyle, I'm having fun now." And so like uh, we go through and we have this have a good good battles making our way back up there and uh kyle's like okay what are we gonna do for tires this next stop and so harry gets in the car and uh i believe we put on rain tires and uh so we chose the kyle was able to choose the right tires the entire time and then harry drove like you wouldn't believe to go and get that win and uh it was it was definitely a crazy crazy event i remember that victory definitely definitely well wow that's good that's good yeah it's a um It's it's such a crucial point whenever you decide to tire because obviously that's that's uh, one of the things that you have to go over and over and over. And uh, but looking at, at your at your numbers, uh, you um, at the position, you guys had 268 points, and the one below with the Audi was 267. So you beat them with one point. So you were like really that close. It was close. Like you, yeah, we were really close. And also on the uh, on the um, Manufacturing, uh, you guys didn't only by one point. Uh, Audi won, but with 325, and the Hyundai only had 324. But obviously, there are so many Audis over there. You yeah. only had two over there, so that that's still that's amazing. That's a really good accomplishment by you guys. We have done uh, in 2019 season. Now, um, I do want to talk about this also. You also participated in TC American Championship. And you were able to place third place uh, or third position, even though you were started, you, you had a late start, right, on the season? Yeah. So I, I was able to make the season opener at Coda, and we start off with a bang. That Hyundai Veloster and TCR car was just on rails that weekend, and uh, it was slightly damp conditions in, in that first mm -hmm. race. And I actually started in, in the last, and there's actually a pretty cool onboard, I think. Uh, I'll have to share it with you, and you know, just kind of battling through all the cars, and That was such a great series, and it's such a great series, and you can have so many great battles there. And I ended up having to miss a few weekends, which you know, made it tough on the championship points, and we still picked up third, but the tracks are so fun. And uh, I got to race at Sonoma as well, which is one of my home tracks, and uh, I had a great season over there, and I ran with the Copa Motorsports team, and it just really shows how versatile the, the Veloster and TCR car is on you know, Pirellis, which are different tires and uh, you know, different track, different fuel, everything. And, and so I just love driving that car anytime I can and had a great time in that series, <laughs> had a great time in IMSA. And it was a busy year. Yeah, I see, I see. I mean, uh, it, I, 
I think it's one of the greatest opportunities to be racing with that car again. And uh, yeah, definitely, I was following you with that TC. I think it, when uh, Eli interviewed, you were racing for the TC, right? TC yeah, America? So, yeah, okay. he came and interviewed me at uh, Portland International Raceway, Portland. which is great to meet him. But... Cool. Um, all right, so can you tell us, uh, based on 2019 season, which one was the hardest course uh, with the Velocity Um So definitely, mm -hmm. definitely the hardest track was the Daytona. And uh, the Velocity and TCR car is just so, has such great handling. And so we have great advantage at, you know, places like Lime Rock or uh, Road Atlanta and D like Laguna Seca and places like that. But at Daytona with the banking and kind of the, the balance of performance on the, on the car, you know, from the series, it's, it can be a little bit tough with those really, really long straightaways, but we try to make it up in the bus stop and <laughs> through the infield. And sometimes, you know, you can get lucky and get a few passes on there, but you know, that's definitely the hardest race for us. And I was really looking forward to getting to Sebring, which is obviously at the end of the year now. And, you know, looking forward to testing out a few, a few different, you know, key, key items there at Sebring because it's probably our second time going there with the Vosser and TCR car. And it should be a great season. And uh, that's probably the hardest track for us, but the rest of them are going to be amazing. All right. So now they were, well, we had the same question for Mark, and obviously he also agreed to that. Uh, and now let's go back to question from the followers. And we're going to start with, uh, all right, let's go with this one. This is from Mark Jeremy Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> can you read the, the question? Oh, yeah, I can read it. So he says, okay. How does it feel to be sitting passenger seat in the top speed of the Audubon? So, Mark and I we, we went to uh, we went to the Nurburgring last year, and we we rented a fun car for our street car as well, and we were there for a few days. And I trust Mark as a driver, but you know, he's sitting on the Audubon, <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking over at him. I'm recording the video too, and so it's on my phone, and, and we're laughing our butts off. And uh, so we go through, and on the way back, we're ripping. And we didn't see a speed camera when the speed limit changed. And so there's the best ticket ever of Mark. He was smiling <laughs> ear to ear, ear to ear with a speeding ticket. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's probably one of my favorite pictures of him. It was hilarious. And that was an amazing that's, trip. So funny. Yeah, that's a good thing to, to actually, you know, hang it on the wall. Like, yeah. I got a ticket and out of it. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you had a question last time for Mark. It was about the uh, Nürburgring. He, he mentioned that you guys were, I mean, the, the road was, it was kind of raining. I think it was risen a little bit, but then you guys hit a damp. And last thing he remembers, is, I mean, while he was losing control, he saw you sideways on the road, on the track. Can you tell us what happened on your side of the car? Uh, so we're, <laughs> so we, we're out there and we're having like the best week of our life. You know, and we're, we're at the Nürburgring every single night and we're running it as, you know, we're ripping and, the, it was the last night we were there and we were going out there we're like how many laps can we do tonight we rent our cars from rsr nurberg and uh so we're, we're going fast and we go out there and we start to see at the end of our lap that the rain's starting to come down you know we barely put on the wipers it's just kind of you know one or two swipes and so we're like ah it's all right you know we're gonna go back out it's like <laughs> it's like the tracks back at home but every single person <laughs> told us they're like you know if you see any rain like it is slick there and you know the nurberg ring is like it's like nothing else especially the norge life and so uh, we're going out and we're hitting the first, you know, section of the track and, you know, we're going through and, and we're just bombing it. It's our last lap we're going to get. We're like, <laughs> this is it. This is all we have. And then our wipers start to go on and I'm following them. We're running the exact same car and, uh, we're going down. I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's kind of like the downhill section where, you know, you go the big compression at the bottom. And so we're doing over 200 kilometers an hour. And I'm like, I look at Mark in front of me. I'm like, why is he lifting? Like, come on, bro. Like, like, you know, because like I'm catching him all of a sudden. And it was something like I come through and uh, I know exactly why he lifted because he's understeering off to the side of the track and I'm following him. I'm sideways through the back of the track. And so there's a video of us and we watched it and we were laughing all night long. Both of us had like the chuckle of like you almost hit a wall chuckle, and so we we decided to call it right there. And we, and we drove we drove so slow back into the back into the thing that we actually got passed by someone of a Subaru Forester, and so uh, they had all wheel drive, which is our excuse, but it was still a, it was still an amazing time. 
No, who has the video? Because he also told me there's a video. Who has the video? I think both of us have a video. I, I'll you have, have to... to see it. You guys have to upload it. I want to see that because that has to be better. Obviously, thank God you didn't crash, but your face must be like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a face camera because, I mean, oh, I was okay. probably like, like a ghost. I mean, <laughs> it was hilarious, you know. Crashing on the on the Nurburgring Green internationally. Oh my God, that, like Mark mentioned, it has to be really expensive. But thankfully, nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened. <laughs> that was an amazing trip. We had we had an amazing time there. <laughs> All right, let's go for one more question from the uh, followers. Uh, here it is. Uh, okay, this one. Okay, so if you could race any racer in the world currently alive, who would it be? Um, it would be really cool to race Max Verstappen because, I don't know, I follow him on his F1 career, and I think it would be unreal to race him and kind of see that, that skill level. All right, all right. So let's see. And All right, so let's go back to our questions. Um, all right, so 2020 season, I am SA. Uh, now you have Michael Lewis. You're, that's your new partner this season. Can you tell us some of the strategies that you you guys are setting for this new season? Yeah, so this year I get to race with Michael Lewis, and we kind of built like a really good relationship last year. And you know, we both live in California. We both did a few events together, and uh, kind of built this kind of you know camaraderie between us and a good duo. And uh, this year we really want to go out and try to get that manufacturer championship for Hyundai, and also. You know, we also want to get that championship for ourselves too, and so it's been amazing working with him. And he's he's probably one of my, he's one of my really good friends too. And so we kind of been making merch together. We went to pit fit early together. I mean, we push each other to train. We push each other to simulate more. I mean, he's incredible at the track as well, and extremely fast. And so I get to learn from him. And last year we had some good qualifying battles. And so this year we'll be on the same car and just pushing each other to the max, just like all of us do. And it's such a great team dynamic between, you know, Mark, Michael, Harry, Ryan, and everyone on the team. And so uh, Gabby and, and I just can't wait to get back to the track and get racing with everyone again. And uh, hopefully yeah. Michael and I will go, go and get some wins together. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, definitely. We're also looking forward to that because we need some race. I think we, that's one of the things that uh, we're personally, I miss a lot. So Seeing you guys on the road, that will be that will be great again. Um, let me see. Well, this question is actually from Michael Lewis. It's not showing up in here, but he asked if you can tell us what is Team Avocado. Okay, so Team Avocado. We were at, I believe it was the Roar, in the you know before the twenty four, and we we're there, and you know Michael and I, you know we're, we're from California. Our engineer John's from California. Data engineer, you know Justin's from California. And, you know, we kind of do our California tendencies and, you know, the way we eat, the way we talk. Sometimes we say, we say bro a lot, you know, different things <laughs> like that. And, uh, and so they're like, they start like poking us and like, they start making fun of us a little bit. They're like, oh, you guys are like team California. And then all of a sudden it kind of turns into <laughs> team avocado. And so as soon as that happened, it stuck. And like, it, it stuck. stuck right away. And so we ended up just going along with our team avocado thing and uh, actually bought team avocado socks we have like just like some avocado oh, socks wow. that, that we wear uh, we wore them at daytona on race day which is pretty funny and then we also have this like mark just said in the comments we have this little avocado that sits in the engineering trailer it's a squishable <laughs> avocado and it sits there in the, it's our little team avocado mascot and so it's, it's hilarious yeah, there you go now, now we know everyone why what's the team avocado then uh, you need to put a sticker there on your car, like a big avocado on the car. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, love avocado on the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> we love our avocado toast, avocado smoothies. I mean, what, you can put avocado on anything, guacamole. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Now, um, obviously, everything goes uh, uh, what IMCA is it's, it's planning to. Um, you guys should be back on the road for the end of June. Uh, can you tell us uh, which race is that and how are you guys preparing for it, considering that obviously there's no, besides the simulator, there, that's the only thing you have uh, to practice. Yeah, so um, we, you know, hopefully it's Watkins Glen, just like it stays on schedule. And uh, 
that's what I know so far at the end of June. Hopefully it's going to be at, at uh, Watkins Glen, which is, which is a really fun track. Another four-hour race. So we'll be going from Daytona four-hour race to Watkins Glen <laughs> four-hour race. And uh, so you can train by, uh, you know, I train you know, running, different things, like exercises and different things like that to, you know, be strong, you know, maybe strengthen your neck because we haven't been in a car a long time. So maybe some neck workouts. Simulator, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, hopefully I can, the car track will open up here soon and uh, go do some karting. And uh, that would be a lot of fun. And uh, definitely looking forward to driving something again fast, you know, and can't wait for that. All right. Uh, now, let's talk about simulator video games. Now, um, recently, the IMCA started with the iRacing. Uh, I think that's one of the first simulators that you guys did online. Yeah. If I'm mistaken. Can you tell us what was the experience? You kind of told us a little bit and Mark did, but how, how do you feel it went? So we went in there and I was like, oh, I, at first, we, you know, it was on my old simulator rig and Mark was on his too. And so we're, we're out there <laughs> and we're watching, you know, these people do these times and, you know, Mark and I, we're, we're locking up, we're spinning out, you know, we're like, oh, how are they doing these times? Like, there's no <laughs> way we're going to get down to, you know, get in here. And so uh, I actually got extremely nervous right before the race started. And I was like, I don't know if I could do this. And we had just... <laughs> on our, uh, our, our engineers like doing our fuel strategy and you know we had like full-on emails and everything like that and you know if i knew a little bit more about sim racing and everything i probably would have upgraded my simulator before that race but uh it was, <laughs> it was a good time i think mark and i were both running that i think is 60 hertz refresh screens and uh like old graphics cards and we're like every time we drive and there's a bunch of people in our lobby like we always crash like we always just keep, just keep crashing <laughs> and so you know, after that race was over, I was like, wow, like it was kind of an eye opener of how fast these people are on the simulator. And it's really, really cool because, you know, I, I definitely enjoy the competition and I want to get faster on the simulator. So definitely been working with that. And Michael, he's so fast on the simulator and it's awesome. So we're always trying to catch him. And I remember before we used to do like at the end of last year in December during our off time, we would do Nürburgring sessions. And so we're always trying to get to Michael's time. And so we haven't done one of those in a bit. But uh, I definitely want to jump back on there and see how much faster we can go with our new setup. <laughs> All right. So now, um, like I was saying, was saying before, you, last night you guys raced with, uh, on the Forza 7 uh, video game. Can you tell us a little bit about this program, which is uh, every week on Thursday? Yeah, so every week on Thursday, uh, BHA and Hyundai are hosting a Forza Motorsport lobby. And so and Mark, Michael, Harry, and I are jumping on there and Brian, we, we go on there and we race, uh, kind of everyone who wants to join. And so hopefully some of the, you know, Hyundai Foster and owners and some of the fans and we jump on there and they choose a bunch of random tracks. We don't even know what tracks they're going to choose. And so like last night it went from Laguna Seca to Monza and the Descuza. Oh, well. It was like, wow, like, <laughs> I, I don't know these tracks at all, but you know, it's, a uh, definitely, it's, it's different than I racing, but both of them are so much fun and it's a lot, it's a great time to drive the Veloster end in there. And, uh, those drivers are so good on Forza. I mean, Mark, it, it, yesterday we were laughing because it would be Mark, Michael, and I, and we'd be battling it out at, like, the last yeah, few laps. I saw that. And we're, like, 14th place or something like that, you know, like 13th <laughs> place. And so it was hilarious. But it, it's so much fun and looking forward to that every week for sure. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so you have about 18 spots available, if not mistaken. Yeah. That uh, every, you have to go into their uh, – Brian heard our sports media, um, um, social, social, social media uh, to sign in, and then after that you'll be able to get into the race. So make sure you guys to to look for that. Uh, the next one is on next Thursday. Um, now every, every, all of this is basically all Velocers end, right? It's yeah. Only mainly Veloster end. Yeah. So every single person will race a Veloster end. Last week we did all stock Veloster ends. And so every single person, there's no upgrades or anything like that. And uh, definitely like learning the Forza tracks are a little bit different. You know, you can, you go on there and it's like, oh, do you have to break here? And, and you know, we, we had a really good setup on because we were doing some testing, like I was saying earlier. And so uh, it was like, oh, when they took that away, we we're like, oh, no, we like lost our breaking points and everything like that. You know, maybe we're taking a little bit too seriously, but it's an amazing time racing with everyone. Definitely, definitely. It's good because that way the, the community can also participate and, and get to talk to you, well, get to know you and 
how you drive and all that. But yeah, I've seen some of the races and some of the drivers over there are kind of a little bit crazy. Oh, <laughs> <You're> there's, <hitting. laughs> there's, there's quite a few crashes. I definitely surviving the first quarter. Like last night, I think I spun before turn one at Monza. Monza, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, it was, but it was so much fun. Every single time, you know, we jump on a phone call after, and we're just laughing because it, it's it's just so much fun to race with everyone and race with you guys and different things like that. Yeah, uh, one thing I do want to mention is I saw Michael Lewis flying. I, I don't remember which which track it was, but I saw him flying. <laughs> that was amazing. But yeah, I think someone hit it on the back and he was controlling, and then he just went on. But it, it was fun. It's fun. I mean, if you guys can join them during that. Even if you cannot drive the car, just watch the streaming because it's so fun. I believe you're doing you last last night. You also streamed on your Twitch account, right? Yeah. So I've been trying to stream on my Twitch account, and uh, we don't have the best internet here, but I'm trying to work on that so next week's stream will be a little bit smoother. And uh, it, it's fun, and I'm learning how to stream, and maybe I'll stream a couple other things too. And so definitely uh, tune into that if you want to see some, you know, Forza Seven or maybe even some iRacing on there. All right, so make sure you follow uh, Mason and all of his social medias. That way he will post it all the, the links for that as well. All uh, right, so next thing. Uh, so last time I also asked Mark about this Hyundai Motorsports. Uh, they invited everyone to their uh, headquarters in Altenau in Germany. Can you tell us what that experience was? Yeah, so we ended up going to Altenau in Germany and uh, we flew over there and it was it was incredible so you show up and i mean hmsg is an incredible factory where the boston tcr cars are built and you walk in and everyone hosts you so well it's like you're part of this huge family and you're surrounded by all these other hyundai racers as well and so you get to you know talk to everyone and kind of hear their experience and you know they had a lot of questions about the Vlosser and tcr car because our the Vlosser and tcr besides the nurburgring 24 hours it's only raced in the united states last year and so we mm -hmm. We're able to get a lot of questions about that. We're able to ask them a lot of questions about racing. And, you know, everyone there is just, they have this like-minded kind of presence where everyone wants to win. And so it's really being surrounded by all those people and being able to talk to all these people that, you, you know, you might send them a DM on Instagram and say, oh, nice job last weekend or something like that. And then you get to meet them in person. And so it was really, really cool. And I definitely enjoyed that experience. And they hosted us so well and took care of us so well and uh, really, really appreciated what they did for us. That's amazing, yeah, and, and I'm glad because uh, you guys did it great. I, like I was mentioning before, 2019 season was really great for you guys. Um, of course, the manufacturing was not able to get it, but it was one point. But at the same time, you guys did so great, and you guys do deserve that recognition uh, from Hyundai Motorsports and Hyundai Motors USA as well. Um, now, let's talk. A, now, let's go back a little bit into more personal questions. Um, now, obviously. Since all this is stay home order, um, most of us, including myself, we have gained a lot of weight. I, I gained a lot of weight. I used to do road bike, and I'm not doing it anymore. How about you? Did you gain any weight, or are you, are you trying to stay fit? Uh, I or you're back to getting fit? It was, uh, I definitely got more fit during this quarantine because oh, there's really? not okay. really anything else to do. You know, So even though there's not like a gym to go to, I'm lucky enough to like have ordered quite a bit of exercise equipment to be at home. And so uh, in the garage, you know, next to the Veloster, and like, it's like my motivation, right? And sitting there and, <laughs> you know, doing different exercises, different things like that. I uh, so used PitFit training, which Hyundai uh, USA had us go to PitFit and learn a lot about um, exercising and workouts and different workouts for drivers. And so I signed up for one of the programs afterward. And so it really keeps me on track every single day of what to do. And so I was able to get definitely in more shape over quarantine than I was before. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's good. Man, I need to get into that program. Then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They're, they're amazing over there. All right. So so you were telling us before that you tried to do some like, running. What do you usually do, like, um, out, um, outdoor sports? What do you do? Like, you run, bike? Yeah, so I... In, at, around my house, you know, it, it's a little bit busier, the traffic, so it's kind of hard to do road biking, but um, I really enjoy running. So there's like a nice, uh, pretty private trail behind my, uh, near me. And so I get to run over to the trail and then start running the trail and have a good time over there. So That's good. That's good. Yeah. As, as, long, as long as we can get a little bit of sun, fresh air, that that's kind of like a keep us sane. Of course, having our distance with everyone else, following all the rules that we have to follow. 
but we do need that air. We do need that sun. Yeah. yeah but it, it's good. It's a weekend. We can get out. Um, all right. So let me see. Now, let me, let's go back to one of the follower questions. Uh, I actually have one here. This one is from the user, the Russian. He's asking, what is the fastest you've been in a car? And I'm adding another to the question. Another thing to the question is on the track and in Mexico. <laughs> so <laughs> in, in Mexico, let's go with the Autobahn because the, the Autobahn is, is good and uh, probably 168 miles an hour there. And then um, I don't actually know what it is on the um, on the track. I can't think of what the fastest car I've driven or like how fast I went. It's probably around 170 or something like that. So I see. Can you tell us which car you were driving? Um, I think it was, I think it was like a, it was a Mustang. It was like a Shelby GT4 or something like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, and then let's see here. Let's pull another one here. Uh, there you go. Okay. This one is from Mark. Oh, so <laughs> when, while at the ring, you're working on some online courses. How did that end up? So last year I was taking uh, calculus during the race season and uh, I go to school for business communications. And so I was, ended up had, I, one of my courses it was at the ring. So I would go to the racetrack. I would have the engineers help me on math. And it was hilarious because I'd be at the <laughs> track and I'd bust out my computer when we're all done with everything, of course, all done with the racing stuff. And Kyle would be there and Justin would be there and John would be there. They're like, you don't know how to do this? Come on. It's like, it's like, I'm like, I don't know how to do calculus. And so it was funny because we go to the Nürburgring and I think I had like a test or something like that. And I was like, I can't focus here. I think I was sitting in the hotel room. We were watching videos and uh, Mark was sitting there and, you know, he was just like, we we're just laughing at each other. And, uh, and I was sitting there and I'd like go through and be like, I, I got it wrong. And so I didn't actually end up passing calculus that time, but you know, I, it, it'll work out at some point, you know, <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right. So let's see one more question. Uh, da -da -da. And where you go? Uh, this is from Veloster Club PH. What do you think about the upcoming Veloster and DCT eight speed? Is it going to be good? I am excited for the DCT. I haven't actually been able to drive it, but I believe it's an amazing product, and uh, it should be really cool. I, I really want to see a comparison between the six-speed manual and the eight-speed DCT on track. I think that'd be really interesting to uh, to see. And uh, I think I saw one video, and I believe it was in Korea, about someone driving eight-speed DCT, and it was it was just all amazing things about it. And uh, uh, definitely looking forward to that. I personally like rowing my gears, and uh, but I I don't know. I'm torn because San Francisco <laughs> traffic is is hard oh, yeah so you know it, it's definitely a toss-up i'm super excited they brought the eight speed dct out because i think it's going to be amazing and uh definitely get to see more velocity ends out there and maybe even more velocity ends on track which would be super super yeah. cool more i think i mean some people have can are able to drive the uh six speed manual but at the same time some others don't and having the eight, eight uh the dual clutch transmission the eight speed it's going to be really good for a lot of people. So definitely looking forward to that car as well yeah. when it comes out. Um, all right. So I have this question for you. You drove the RM19. I don't know how many people were able to drive it here in the United States, but you were one, the lucky one. Can you tell What can you tell me about the car and how it felt? It was awesome. It was a you know, rear engine, rear wheel drive, had the sequential gearbox from our race car. It was, you know, balanced. It was fun. It was rowdy. It was, you know, it was, a, it was an amazing car, and I had so much fun driving it down at the proving grounds. And uh, I definitely dream of driving that car again. And you know, I, I can't wait to see what it, what comes out of it with it. And uh, so much fun, such an amazing car, and it's, it's something else. I, I, yeah. Yeah, we recently found some some pictures about this car. It's, it's, it has the same chassis for the RM19, but it has the 2.3 turbo. 
and we were they were told that it might have an electric engine there as well. So it's getting interesting with that car. So hopefully, uh, some something cool will come out of it. But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to that car. The RM19 has been a prototype for so many years that they've been building, and uh, um, you've been able one because at, if I'm not mistaken, you were one of them, and then Terry. Uh, forgot his last name, but uh, he's from France. He, yeah, he enough. drives on the WRC. Yeah, um, he drove it too, uh, but he drove it in snow. So that gotta gotta be tricky, but also fun at the same time. I believe proving grounds. Obviously, I've been there before, and the the tracks there is it's amazing. Obviously, it's perfect. So I'm pretty sure that that was also going to be fun. But on the snow, I, I would have been a challenge. But that, uh, yeah, crazy. Yeah, they're looking forward to that car. Hopefully, we'll. Not too many years will pass before we see that car. Um, all right, so kind of wrapping up here, but let me ask you: uh, Which cars do you have currently in your driveway? Any Hyundai's? Yeah, so I have the the Veloster, and uh, and that's probably the car that I drive the most. And uh, it's it's so much fun because you can take it to back roads and you know kind of carve the canyons with that, or you can put it in the comfort mode, normal mode, and drive it and commute or whatever you need to do. I haven't been able to do too much driving during quarantine, so it's kind of sad, but I still like to wash it every single week and take care of it and wax it and different things like that, you know. And uh, definitely I can't wait till I mean, everything opens back up again and maybe get together with some people. And one time I went to a Veloster and meet that was around my area and definitely want to meet up with those guys again. And so it's a lot of fun. Cool, cool. Yeah, I've been looking to your social media, and you take really good pictures of your Veloster, and then you have some really good subjects in there. How, how, is that something that you, it just comes natural, or you had studied a little bit to to get the shots? Or I, I really enjoy photography, and I think I've enjoyed it for most of my life. I think when I was a younger kid, too, I even went to like a little photography camp, and so it's just something that I like to do on, you know, during my free time or you know, try to find a good spot to take pictures. And there's so many beautiful areas you can go. And, you know, the cool part about photography is you can take your the Veloster end and you can explore different places that you've never really seen before that are still close to home. And so I definitely, one day, I want to take it across the country and kind of take pictures all the way across because I feel like it'd be a really cool series. So that's, that's definitely a, a dream I have of that. But uh, photography is a lot of fun. And kind of that's been one thing I've been able to play with during quarantine is, you know, maybe take some pictures at home but you know, it might not look like you're at home and things like that so right right yeah, amazing yeah i've seen your social media and it's really cool can you tell us can you remind us what is your instagram twitter if you remember of course but do you have it on hit oh yeah so my instagram is at mason underscore Filippi, same as my twitter uh facebook is mason Filippi racing um my website is mason Filippi racing com, and then twitch is uh twitch.tv slash mason Filippi. And YouTube is Mason Flippy as well. So. All right. So let's finish it up a little bit with um, any last words you have, any recommendations for everyone out there. You know, I just uh, hope everyone stays safe and stays healthy out there. Maybe, you know, go and download Forza 7 and come join us for a race one time or, you know, learn how to uh, roasting coffee beans in a pan. You can order the green beans from uh, <laughs> from Amazon and, uh, the, you know, you do different things like that. Pick up a new hobby, you know, maybe read a book that you have sitting on your shelf that you haven't been able to read. And so uh, just enjoy yourself, enjoy your family, you know, stay safe, stay healthy out there and uh, can't wait for everything to get back to normal and get racing again. All right. Thank you very much, Mason. It's been a pleasure to finally get to talk to you and meeting you and definitely looking forward to this, this season uh, 2020. Um, and obviously always rooting for you guys so you can get some, a lot of wins and, and like you mentioned before, this year, uh, your uh, the goal is to get in the manufacturing class. So definitely looking for you guys, rooting for you. And we'll, for all the followers there, uh, be sure to follow Mason. Uh, we have Mason, we have Mark Wilkins, we have Michael Lewis, Harry Gutsacker, Gabby Chavez, and Ryan, I forgot his last Norman. name, Tur Turner? Mark, okay, Norman. there you go. So be sure to follow all our six drivers uh, for uh, Brian Herter of Autosports. They'll be driving all the Veloster N. Uh, your number is 98. Uh, I think it's 88 for Gabby and... 33, 33 for Gabby and Ryan, and then 21 yeah. for uh, Mark and Harry. There you go. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mason. I hope uh, you had a 
fun time over here yeah, talking to time. us a little bit about the cars, about you, that people will get, get to know you. And uh, hopefully, again, we can do this in uh, one of the races you guys are doing. And uh, look, definitely looking forward for this season. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. And I uh, had a great time talking with you. And uh, hope you uh, have a good night and uh, with your family and everything like that. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. See, ya. See you later.